Today on DJ Essentials, we're gonna tackle three deck mixing and why it can make you a more versatile DJ. So before I start the video, I wanna address a couple of things about three deck mixing. Most would consider it an expert level technique, but I actually consider it of more of an intermediate level technique. It's because DJs don't always need to mix with three or more decks, but learning its concept early can help you elevate any sort of mix you do. But that's why I wanna teach it now rather than later so that we can get the ball rolling for more expert level techniques in the future. Another thing about this tutorial is the type of hardware you're gonna need is gonna matter to some extent. You'll be able to learn just fine with no hardware at all actually, but having hardware that has either four decks or a four channel mixer is needed for this tutorial. So with that out of the way, let's dive into why three deck mixing can be really helpful for DJs. So you might be asking what exactly is three deck mixing? It's the process of when a DJ traditionally mixing with two turntables, introduces a third one to the mix. Again, you might be asking, where is my third turntable? The cool thing about the DJ FLX6 by Pioneer is that it is a four turntable controller and you can toggle between each of the other turntables with this toggle switch right here. Now, two deck mixing is perfectly fine and lots of DJs continue to mix with just two decks for the entirety of their career. Introducing a third deck can be really helpful if you want to do, let's say, a live mashup, and you don't want to sacrifice using up one of your turntables that you need to mix once you get to the next mixing point. You can do just fine using your second turntable as the one that loads the acapella, but it can be tricky once you get to the situation where you need to unload your acapella, load in your next track, and cue it on the next mixing point before you reach the mixing point. Most of the time, you're not gonna have that much space or that much time to do that, so utilizing a third deck can really help. So let me give you an example of when three deck mixing can be really useful and spice up the mix. First, let's just start off with a basic transition where it's just two tracks, but during the midpoint or the beginning parts of the transition rather, there's not gonna be much going on for me. All right, so I'm just gonna queue up this track right at the start of its drop. And my mixing point is around halfway through this drop, which is about, I think, a 16 or 32 beats away. So during that time, I'm not really doing much at all, to be blunt. I know I need to trigger hot cue B for my next track, and I have the track lowered here, because I need to keep it, I don't want to overpower the mix just yet. All right, so we're coming up to our mixing point, and I trigger hot cue B. I get ready and I raise the volume here. And you can hear that hi-hat going. So this is the start of our transition. And it took a while to get there though. Again, I'm still not doing much right now. I'm just letting the transition ride. And I phrase it out nicely so that both these tracks reach their breakdown at the exact same time. And I'm not gonna use much effects at all, just a low pass filter, just to start filtering out track A. And at the same time, I'm going to introduce the bass on track B. And to keep it more simple, I'm just going to lower the volume here right at the drop. So that was a nice, simple transition. But what I can do is introduce an acapella to sort of make that transition a little bit more lively and a little bit more active. An acapella is just the vocal of a song. Most songs either have just instruments or instruments and a singer accompanying it. The acapella is just that singer. Now, syncing acapellas is a lot harder than syncing just two tracks together. What I've taught before is to have a marker or cue point to let you know when to start your next track and start mixing. But with acapellas, not all tracks start on the one. You have to make sure that the both the track and the acapella are the same BPM, and you gotta make sure that they align on the right phrase. Another fundamental you need to remember as well when mixing acapellas is the key that the acapella is sung at. It needs to be close or match the song that you're mixing in, or else it's not gonna sound right. So I mentioned previously how to sync acapellas when you're cueing them on the fly. And there's really two ways to do that. First way and the way I prefer is really just by feel. It really helps if you have a copy of the actual song you're mixing into, the full song with the instruments and the acapella to reference when the vocals come in 
to that track. So I have a copy of the full track that I've grabbed the acapella from, and I'm just gonna take a listen and count along the beats so I know when the acapella comes in. Right here in the track is where the acapella comes in. It comes in after the short eight beats little phrase at the beginning, right at the beginning of the phrase at beat one. That makes mixing it in a lot easier than if you were to come in at like beat three, for instance. So now I know when it comes in, and I can apply that sort of feeling of when the vocal comes in to when I mix it in. The other way and the more the exact way to do things is figure out where the acapella and the track line up prior to mixing them in, setting a cue point there, and then going back a certain amount of beats and setting a cue point prior. And then just all you need to do is instead of aligning vocals, you just align cue points. I know my vocal starts here. I know its cue point I need to line up is here. If I line those two up, and then in my software, I switch to beat jump, and let's say I jump eight beats back, and I set a cue point right there. If I can do the same here and jump eight beats back, and set of the exact same cue point, all I need to do is just line those two cue points. Now, I haven't really set much of a gap here, but you probably want to set one at least 16 beats prior, and you'll be able to line those cue points naturally. So let's say this is playing. All I need to do is just hit the cue point there, make sure they're lined up. And just like that, both tracks are in sync. So let's now fully demonstrate three deck mixing to its fullest of capabilities. The transition at its core is a normal smooth two deck transition. All we're really adding to this transition is the acapella beforehand. So all that's required for me to do here is for my first track, set a mixing point for the acapella and a mixing point for the next track. And to then make sure that my acapella doesn't run out, set an auto loop right at the end of the acapella so I can easily fade it out without much worry. So I'm gonna start right before the mixing point for the acapella, okay? I switch to deck three, and I cue the acapella at my mixing point. Now I can safely go back to deck one here, and ready deck two. So I'll lower the volume here, lower the base of deck two, and lower the gain to, I think it's around there. And already, even though I'm waiting for my mixing point, the song is a lot more interesting with that vocal. Okay, so my mixing point right here, two point B. Wait eight beats and all three decks playing. Reminder, this deck three is still playing. And right here, deck three begins to loop. So at any point in time, I can lower channel three whenever I need to transition. Which co coincidentally is right here. So I'm just gonna slowly bring out the base of track one and raise the base of track two to so get a nice smooth transition. So that's gonna do it for this episode of DJ Essentials. But before I go, I really just wanna give a massive thank you to everyone who's been watching, liking the videos, commenting, and more importantly, subscribing to my channel. I just checked this morning and we hit 500 subscribers and I never thought we would really, I never thought I'd really make it that far. And from something that just started as a passion project for really just my schooling, to now something I'm passionately want to continue doing and continue teaching what I've learned through just my own passion. I just want to give a massive thank you for everyone. Um, I'm hoping to do an episode every week. Uh, I haven't really planned what, what episode next week is. I normally give you an inclination when, what the next episode is going to be about. But next week, I hope to be back to give you more DJ Essentials. But for now, I've been Zeeshan and I'm signing out.